Hello, welcome to the Daily Devotion. I'm Kathy Morris, pastor of the Dixon United Methodist Church. Our Bible reading for today tells the story of Abraham and Sarah. Abraham and Sarah, as God had called them to be in a special covenant relationship, it was a relationship that they would receive God's blessing through, through God's love, but it was also a relationship through which they would be sharing God's blessing to all the world. So let us listen to this reading from the, the book of Genesis, chapter 12, verses 1 through 9. The Lord said to Abram, Leave your land, your family, and your father's house for the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation and will bless you. I will make your name respected and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and those who curse you I will curse. All the families of the earth will be blessed because of you. Abram left just as the Lord told him, and Lot went with him. Now Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. Abram took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, and all their possessions, and those who became members of their household in Haran. They set out for the land of Canaan. When they arrived in Canaan, Abram traveled through the land as far as the sacred place at Shechem, at the Oak of Morah. The Canaanites lived in the land at that time. The Lord appeared to Abram and said, I give this land to your descendants. So Abram built an altar there to the Lord who appeared to him. From there he traveled toward the mountains east of Bethel and pitched his tent at Bethel on the west side and I on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and worshiped in the Lord's name. Then Abram set out toward the arid southern plain making and breaking camp as he went. To become God's covenant people is not just a matter of words, it's a matter of action. And so Abraham and Sarah moved. They moved with God's calling. It was a practical decision, it was a spiritual decision. And we know that because in each place that they went, they built an altar. They built a place to worship God. This week, we are celebrating the 150th anniversary of the move of the church building from Sylvieville in 1870 to, to Dixon. It was an important time in the in the history of this area. Sylvieville had been established as a, a stopping place between Sacramento and the Bay Area. It was a coach stop with a hotel. It was in 1858 that a small group of people decided that they would establish, establish a Methodist Episcopal Church. And then in 1866, they built a building a permanent place in which to worship God. And then things changed. The Transcontinental Railroad was built and the town of Sylvieville, its residents, the houses, and the church itself moved to a place that would become known as Dixon along the railroad line. This was a practical decision. It was a spiritual decision. And in that decision, it was not just a matter of words, it was a matter of really hard work. Moving the church building took a lot of work. They had to begin uh, several weeks before the, the actual move took place in, in the month of September to get underneath and start lifting the church building off of its foundation using house jacks that would have been turned as they then brought the building up high. And then once the building was raised up high enough, 
They were then able to put logs and some skids underneath, and then they, they lowered the jacks so that the, the building was able to sit on top of the logs. And once all of that work had been accomplished, they then hitched the building up to a team of mules that then pulled the building across those two and a half miles to Dixon. And each time one of the logs came out at the back, they would move it around to the front. That took real dedication. To be God's faithful people requires work. It requires effort. And yet it is as we put in this work that we also experience the blessing for ourselves and the blessing for the people who are around us. In your prayer journal, I would invite you to list the places you have moved to, list the moves that you have experienced in your life. And then as you think about each one of those moves, to ask yourself the question, how did I experience God's calling at this point in my life? And then another question to ask yourself is, how did I experience God's blessing?